Good morning, church. It's so good to see everybody here today. If you can stand as we're able and join us in worship. to be in the house of the Lord with you this morning. It's a lot cooler in here than it is just 10 feet on the other side of those doors. Um, you can see summer's coming. But and thank you for accepting the Lord's invitation to be here worshiping today on this fifth Sunday of Easter. Just a few announcements before we get going. Tuesday morning, 10 a.m., Women's Bible Study there in the Fellowship Hall. They'd love to have you as part of that. Uh, Donna Hewlett leads that. If you have any questions, you can Ask us how to contact her or come up and talk to me and I'll try to answer those for you. Wednesday, WOW program, 5.30 is a free meal for anyone in the community. Six o'clock, discipleship groups for all ages, including adults. And at seven o'clock, we close in worship in here. And we are fast, uh, not this Wednesday, but the Wednesday after that is the last WOW of the year. Uh, and we will you know, pause that program during the summer and um, we'll implement other programming throughout the summer for the church. But uh, it is fast approaching to the end. If you have never come out and experienced WOW, uh, we invite you to do so. We would love to have you. So. 
Game day, Monday, 1 o'clock, Fellowship Hall tomorrow, and that is Bunko, always a blast. So, um, Kay said prepare to lose if you come. Uh, no, but uh, no, it's always a good time, so they, we hope you'll come out for that. Our basket raffle fundraiser uh, for church camp is still going on, and that the winner of that will be drawn May 17th, which is our last wow. It will be drawn at that. So you have just about a week and a half to get raffle tickets if you would like. There are some wonderful prizes in the MailChimp. Uh, they, it, in the MailChimp, there was a description of all the baskets. You can go on to that in your email or on Facebook. And if you need raffle tickets, uh, please see any of our Club 56 or our church camp participants and Jennifer Strickland. So she will get you set up with that. VBS is fast approaching. It'll be here the end of June. Uh, we have a lot of things going. We have children's camp in June going on, and we have VBS as well. Um, so um, as with all our programs for, you know, big programs, WOW and things like that, it takes volunteers. And we're blessed, with, you know, that many of you have uh, volunteered your time in years past. If you would like to volunteer, uh, we have roles that can fit all kinds of people. Uh, so... If you would like to take part in VBS as a volunteer uh, and do the great work of sharing the gospel and the Lord with the young people, the next generations of Christians, please see myself or Jennifer Strickland in that. So Wednesday, 5 o'clock at the Betty's house, which is right back here, is our Say Amen Food Pantry led by Nikki Campbell. We have a, a great group of volunteers, uh, but we would like you and your help and your presence as well. It's a great way to serve the Lord and to serve the Lord's people and to, and to be active in serving those in need in our community. Uh, we, you can get there at 5. We usually try to get there a little early uh, just to try to start lining some things up, get it prepared. But uh, it's a great group, and it's a great, a, a great way to serve. Uh, so we would love for you to be a part of that, and that will be Wednesday at 5 o'clock at the Betty's house. As uh, always, if you have a musical talent the Lord has blessed you with and the Spirit's moved you to share that for the glory of the Lord, please see Chris, our music ministry leader, and you see our amazing music ministry team, uh, our band. We are blessed by them, and they would love to get you worked into that. Or maybe you're just looking for a quiet way to be a part of the service. We have an amazing tech team with Jared and Paige in the back. And if you would like to learn how to do that or, you know, be trained as a backup, as many of you are, please see Paige and Jared and they will get you, uh, talk to you about that. So are there any other announcements that need to be made this morning? All right. Well, if not, then brothers and sisters, I invite you to stand as able as we affirm our faith in proclaiming the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. And on the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
come now to the time we lift up our prayer concerns and our joys to the Lord. On the screen is our prayer list. Please keep all people. It was on there. There it is. Uh, please keep all people uh, that are in on that list and all uh, situations in your prayers. If you have any updates on anything on our list or see something that needs to be on there that's not, please let us know so we can keep that updated uh, as best as possible. So I ask you this morning, what is it that needs to be lifted to the Lord in prayer or lifted up and celebrated? That's too many hands at once. <laughs> no, Philip. Uh, Pat Smith's name was on there. She was gone from home. I didn't hear you. Pat Smith's name was mm. on there and she had gone off. All right. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. But thank you for letting us know. We'll keep those in our prayers. Mark. Remember now. Yes, the horrible, uh, evil, and senseless actions that took uh, place in Allen yesterday. We'll definitely keep them in our prayer. So, Jennifer. I have a couple. What was her name? If you wouldn't just make sure Kay gets those last names so we get them spelled right there. Kay. No, I'm just pointing my finger. Oh, I was like, I was like, what did I do? No, so. Uh, yes, Joe. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. It's a good see. Well, good see. You got the radiation now. We're going to be covering you in prayer through the infusion part of this. So, But great to see you. It's, you see you're glowing and doing well, brother. So. Yes. We take prayers for my Continue uh, to put Ashley uh, Renfro, you said, correct? Yeah, I just want to make sure uh, in our prayers. I know we have a, a few from this morning I want to lift up to make sure everybody is aware of uh, things going on and lifted up in our church family. We may not be in the same service, but we're part of the same family. We need to be praying for each other. Um, a lot of joys. Uh, one, uh, uh, Joy within the GMC uh, yesterday, uh, the Rio Grande Conference has uh, been a little tough with disaffiliations, but yesterday all churches who were up for dis disaffiliation got approved and passed at the annual conference. Also within our uh, old conference, the Central Texas Conference, there was going to be, uh, we learned earlier this year that there would be no third wave of disaffiliations allowed but now they are allowing a third wave for churches. So uh, we just say, thank the Lord for making a way. Um, we had a, a wonderful, uh, I got corrected. I, I pronounced it as the women's club in the first service. And Kay let me know it's called the woman's club because one woman started it. And it's a neat history. It is the oldest and longest running woman's club in the state of Texas. Uh, I also learned this morning in between services that they put my sidewalk in front of the house in. So uh, they were active, but they had a wonderful enchilada lunch uh, prepared for uh, city officials and first responders uh, Tuesday. It was a great thing to come and be a part of and be able to pray with them. I told the first service the most entertaining part was the questions afterward with Chief Holt. Um, and, you know, a lot of safety questions, a lot of them around the Walmart parking lot, uh, yeah. questions about taser guns, karate chops, and all kinds of stuff. So <laughs> I enjoyed it. So, but but it was a great to be a small part of that, and it was great to you know be able to uh, our church host that. Uh, so also we had an amazing men's prayer breakfast yesterday morning. 
Um, I was a little disappointed there weren't breakfast tacos out this morning. Uh, I was hoping we'd carry that on. But now a big thank you to Curtis following uh, the Lord's urging and starting that service. Uh, and all who volunteered and helped cook, helped clean up. And then we, you know, uh, piddled around the church doing some small maintenance things yesterday. But uh, we, we are blessed with a great group that cares deeply about this church. And it was just an amazing time to be together. Also, uh, this weekend, we had uh, three of our uh, ladies here from the church go to the Revive Women's Retreat. Jennifer Strickland, Marilyn Brooks, and... Uh, Liz Naylor, and I've heard great things about all that, except maybe sleeping on an air mattress. But uh, I said, everything else I heard has been great so far, so we celebrate that. I uh, got a good report on John Maldonado uh, this morning. Uh, they are going to now look and uh, take a biopsy on his young, lungs, but they think they got everything with that mask cleared out. Uh, so, but uh, keep him in your prayers. Uh, Debbie and Hank are back from their tour of everywhere uh, they're always they're always you know going somewhere but it's good to have them back uh Lorena varsity baseball team advanced in the playoffs by beating franklin uh, which is a highly ranked team in the state so we celebrate that um keep the strahan family in your in your prayers uh with the passing of matt keep the weber family in your prayers with the passing of mr weber um Audrey, uh, there's a young lady, or a lady who had a brain mass. She's 87 years old. Uh, she is now on hospice. Um, keep Hallie in your prayers as she is sick this morning. Continue to uh, pray for David Snow. He's on our list. Uh, he is now, uh, he is battling pneumonia. The two surgeries he's had so far on his back and his leg are doing well in healing, but there's a lot more work he needs to be, uh, needs to be done from the flipping of that fire truck. So. Uh, just please be with him. And also on the personal side, I know I'm reeling these off really fast, uh, but uh, please keep my stepfather, Matt Wilson, in your prayers. He will undergo a very complicated heart surgery uh, this Tuesday morning. Uh, I will be there for that and most likely will be gone all day Tuesday. Uh, so just, just keep him and your doctors and his doctors in your prayers. So. Now that I'm done talking, anything else? Well, if not, then brothers and sisters, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, thank you for being you. We thank you that you are you and we are not. For you are all-knowing. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the Way. And Lord, we're just so grateful that you call us your own. So grateful that we are a child of God. Father, we come to you with many prayer requests and many joys this morning. Lord, we thank you again for the ways that you call us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. We thank you for the ways that we, this church stands in that light, Lord, and the great things that you're doing, not only through our children's and youth programs, Lord, uh, but through our adult programs, Lord. And we're certainly grateful for the amazing uh, experience that um, the ladies had this weekend at the Women's Revive Retreat. And, Lord, we just pray that from that, Lord, that they grow closer to you, closer than ever before. And, Lord, um, that you continue to grow and mold them. Lord, we're thankful for an amazing uh, church that hosts uh, all kinds of people in our community. And what a great group the, the Woman's Club is here in Lorena. And Lord, what a blessing it was to be able to host them and uh, our first responders and city officials this week for a wonderful lunch. Lord, we thank you for a great men's prayer breakfast. Uh, Lord, yesterday for those who cooked, those who put it together, those who taught. Uh, Lord, we just pray that you continue to bring your people and that you just continue to grow that. And we men can be a stubborn folk, Lord, as you know, we're hard-headed. But, Lord, we just pray that you continue to soften our hearts and grow us together, not only in fellowship with each other, but in deeper fellowship with you. <coughs> Lord, we're grateful for great news on John Maldonado, but, Lord, we know that they're still going to have to check his, kid, or his lungs now. So we just pray for a good report on that biopsy, Lord, and we pray for his complete healing. Lord, we're thankful that uh, Debbie and Hank had a wonderful trip. And what, how blessed are we that they are back, Lord. We're thankful that they're back safe. And Lord, we're grateful uh, for our wonderful school system, all our students, all our teachers, 
And Lord, we're certainly grateful for the success of our program, their programs. And Lord, we just pray continued success upon the Lorena's uh, varsity baseball team. Lord, thank you for what you were doing uh, through the GMC. And thank you for making a way, Lord. You certainly did split the sea again, Lord, for this to happen because it looked hopeless in so many different ways. But Lord, let us never forget that nothing is hopeless with you. Father, for all those who are sick, we pray for their healing. We certainly lift up uh, Hallie to you and just pray, uh, Lord, for her healing and her well-being. Lord, for those who mourn, we lift them up to you. We lift the Strahan family to you with the passing of Matt, the Weber family with the passing of Mr. Weber. And Lord, we lift up the Smith family with the passing of Pat. Lord, and just pray that your, uh, ev that your presence and your comfort and your peace is ever present in their lives. Lord, we celebrate the great report uh, from Joe, Lord, that he has done with radiation, Father. And Lord, he is uh, doing great. We're thankful that his energy level is back up. And Lord, we continue to cover him in prayer and pray for healing as uh, the infusions are about to begin. And that will be every other week. So, Lord, we just pray that you strengthen him, give him the strength he'll need for this, Lord, and just continue to bless him. And, Lord, we pray for his healing, just as we do the healing of David Snow, Lord, as he is still fighting uh, to heal and for his life in the hospital. So, Father, be with him. Lord, we lift uh, Susan up to you as she is battling uh, or fixing to start breast cancer treatment, Lord, uh, for all those battling cancer, and including Susan, Lord, we pray for their healing. And Lord, we lift Ruthie up to you, Lord, as she um, is, uh, has to go in for gastric testing. Lord, we pray for a good report, but if there is something that needs to be seen, Lord, make that clearly visible to our doctors and guide them by your spirit. And Lord, we certainly lift up Ashley Rimfo, Lord, as... Um, the CAT scan, uh, for, she has to go in for a CAT scan, the stage one cervical cancer. And Father, we pray for her well-being. We pray for her healing. We pray that you give her strength in the battle ahead. Lord, we lift up all those, the community of Allen and all the family and citizens there who were affected by the senseless and evil uh, actions that were took place yesterday in the shooting at the mall. Lord, unfortunately, evil finds a way. Lord, be with those families. Be with that community, all those who mourn. Lord, be with them. Grant them your peace that surpasses all understanding and flood them with your comfort and love. And Lord, we pray for an end of all senseless acts of evil and violence. And Lord, we pray that you imprint it upon our heart, your children. Lord, that we don't have to wait to, till we pass from this life to go to heaven. We can... But just as we say as in the prayer, we'll say right after this, Lord, uh, as, in he, or as on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we can live into heaven on earth now. So, Lord, we pray that you lead us in safety and protection to those who you are, that you can change their hearts. Because, Lord, only you can change hearts. But, Father, please be with Alan, be with all those families who are mourning, or in all those victims who are fighting for their lives. And, Lord, we lift Matt Wilson up to you, and we pray, Lord, for success in his heart surgery Thursday or Tuesday. Lord, be with his uh, surgeons. Guide them by your spirit. Let nothing in that room take place or happen that is not of your spirit. And Father, we just pray that you be with his wife, my mother, and all of our family, Lord, and grant us peace and give us the wisdom and strength to lay our anxieties and worries and concerns at your feet, knowing that you are in control. Father, we lift up Audrey as well, who is in hospice. And Lord, this is very difficult for her children, so please be with them. And if this is your time to take her home, uh, Lord, Please just comfort them and may it be a peaceful transition as we pray the same for Linda Stott and her father, uh, Lord. And if it is his time, Father, please make it peaceful and welcome him into your presence. Lord, what a blessing it is to come to you with our prayers and our concerns and our joys. 
knowing that you hear every one of them even before we give them voice. So, Father, in all these situations, we pray your will be done. And we pray this in the holy name of Jesus Christ, as together we pray the prayer he taught long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those that have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We've come now to the time of our tithes and offerings. May the ushers please come forward. Right back on the saddle. Would you please pray with me? Gracious God, as we prepare to give back to you what you joyfully and freely gave to us, blessed us with. Lord, we pray those same blessings on these offerings, that through them, more of this community and more of your children come to know your name. And then above all, Lord, you and only you are brought the glory that you so deserve. Father, we thank you. We love you. It's in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. children that would like to go to godly play, you may go now. So. And there goes. Get me, man. I put it in there for you, buddy. <laughs> so, I was wondering. I was like, man, I'm getting tips now. No, so. <laughs> I think if given the option or the choice, most of us and most people, if we had to choose, hey, would you rather be a leader or a follower? Would you rather be in charge or not in charge? A lot of us would rather be in charge. That means, you know, we get our way uh, in most cases. Some of us want nothing to do with leading. Uh, and some of us, you know, when we think about being in a position of leadership, that's what we want. We, we, you know, we state our opinion over and over. We want that place of leadership only to get it and realize, ah, this isn't all it was cracked up to be. But we like the thought of being in charge. We like the thought of being in control. And sometimes, and especially in areas of faith, that can cause us to go off course very quickly when we lose sight of the fact that we are not the one. We are not Neo from the Matrix. We are not Jesus Christ. We're going to look at a, a section of Scripture from the second chapter of 1 Peter, verses 2 through 10, and how it deals and what Peter has to say about some of this. Hear now the word of the Lord. 
like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tested that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone, rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for those who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And that's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you please pray with me? Gracious God, fill all of us here today with your spirit. And by that spirit, speak through me to all of us, your people, not my words, but yours. Speak to us your truth by the power of your spirit. And Father, draw us near to you this day. It's in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk so that you may grow into salvation. That's a powerful little deal of imagery there. What Peter's saying to them to us is long for the milk of the gospel the milk of the word as a babe longs for its mother's breath now it says so that we may be built up into salvation so the first thought may come to your mind first thought you know comes to my mind when I read that sometimes is well you know I thought we lived in the salvation except in Christ. So he's not saying that we have to do this. We have to understand what to salvation means in this sense to fully understand uh, what he is saying. And the words to salvation mean that feeding on it, it being the word of God, it being the milk of the word, by feeding on it, you may be grown up to salvation. And salvation here speaks of a mature state, not something achieved per, uh, here, per saltum at conversion. Meaning, you're not a mature adult when you were born, were you? No. I guess maybe unless your name is Benjamin Button, something along them lines. We're not a mature Christian at our conversion when we accept Christ. It's in the same sense. Now, you may have caught you know, a Latin phrase there I used, per saltum. That's a Latin phrase meaning hopping out of all things. And now you might be thinking, well, Pastor Chris, well, we're, we're in the fifth Sunday of Easter. I thought well, the hopping was over. Per salta means, and it's used when it's talking about somebody who has reached a position or reached a degree without going through the post or lower grades according to the established order. Meaning, we try to skip steps. I know y'all have never been guilty of that. I am neither. And that, you know, would be a lie. 
We all try to skip some steps now and then. Think about the old, the old saying, born on third thinks he got a triple. Meaning, you know, the person was born on third, but they skipped first and second. They skipped steps, to, you know, and we're trying to start out at third base. Think of this as an example that maybe it allows us to better understand it in the sense of church and religion. It's like trying to become a bishop when you've never even become a priest. How would that work? So persaltum means skipping steps. And we all want to skip to that step, to that maturation, that full maturation. But we can't, and especially in the realms of faith, because we have to be built up. We have to be nurtured. And to nurture, we need the milk of the word. Like a newborn baby needs its mother's milk to start growing, to be, you know, to, uh, to be nurtured, to be taken care of, to be fed. We must feast on God's word. You know, I remember when I was first came to the Lord, I had such a hunger for God's word. It was almost like it couldn't be fulfilled. And man, let me tell you, I have fought, not that I don't have a hunger for the word now, but I have fought to get back to that place. We worked crazy hours in the family company, sometimes it'd be 12 hour days, sometimes way longer than that. And I remember when I couldn't wait to get to the hotel or get back home so I could open my Bible and start reading. And I kept reading and I kept reading until I fell asleep. And I would wake up in the morning and my Bible would be open on my chest or hanging off the side. And I would wake up before I even really you know, got moving. I would grab my Bible and pick up reading right where I was left off. I had a hunger. Why? Because I didn't grow up in church. I didn't have knowledge of the word. I didn't have much knowledge about God. And the spirit placed in me a hunger that couldn't be quenched. We must have that hunger for God's word. And we must know that we can't skip steps, not in faith. We are not mature in our faith at our conversion, but we're newborns seeking the steps, the knowledge, and in, in all that that leads to maturity in our faith. But again, the problem is, and I know some of y'all are like me. The idea of skipping steps is fun. Because, man, when I was going through seminary, let me tell you, if I knew a way to skip steps and quit writing them papers earlier, I would have done it. I love seminary. I hated writing papers. We like skipping steps, though. We like following our own paths. But we like skipping steps and understand that, especially here in the West now, we are a people who are used to instant gratification. We become impatient when we have to wait to do something or achieve something. Those computers we carry in our pockets, in your purses, you know, your cell phones, the whole world is right there. You know, there. It's instant gratification. I can look up, I have a question about anything, I can look it up. We are a society of instant gratification. And that pours, unfortunately, that pours into our faith journey. We don't want to go through all the steps. But we don't have a choice. To give you an example of what I'm talking about, of skipping steps, like the bishop, you know, try, if you've got to be a priest first to be a bishop. Now, I know us men catch a lot of flack for this, but I'm sure everybody, you know, can relate how many times have you bought something new at the store, whether it be furniture, whether it be a place or a play set or something, and you open that box and you start pulling out the parts and you're laying them all to the side, and then when you get about halfway down or to the bottom of the box, they're taped to one of the parts of the side of the box in a plastic or a thing called instructions. And you grab them and throw them to the side or leave them taped right where they're at. We've all done it in some sense. You look at all these parts and you think, well, this is just common sense. I can do this without following the instructions. And we start to make our own path, our own you know, uh, way of doing it. And oftentimes, if you're like me, I skip steps that were important. 
or I come across a piece that goes into something, and I'm looking at it going, what on earth is this? Oh, it's got to go here. It's got to go here. And I'll spend an hour trying to figure that out rather than just open up the instruction because I don't want to take part in that step. That's a waste of time. But what happens in the end is we waste time. We waste time, and what we're trying to, you know, create most times becomes a mess. And we got to, you know, if, in my case, I got most time take it all apart and then sit there, you know, a couple hours later, humbled and beaten down as I read the instructions. And they, well, here we go. We like, we like to skip steps, but we can't when it comes to matters of the faith. And then Peter says something interesting, something, you know, that could baffle minds. He says, come to him, come to God as living stones. And he speaks of the Christ as being a living stone, rejected yet in his sight precious. And we all are. And Peter explains that. But first, what on earth is a living stone? Anybody ever seen a living stone? You ever been out at the pond or at the lake and skipped a rock across there and it just hollered at you, what are you doing? I've never experienced a living stone. But in the next verse, Peter kind of explains what he's getting at and what he means by that. He says, let yourselves, after we come to God as living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, a temple, as some translations say. Peter is saying Christ, Christ our Savior, is a living stone. Christ our Savior is a living stone, the cornerstone in the new temple of God. In us, God's worshipers, we are the ones to be living stones in that temple, built around that cornerstone, Jesus Christ. So what on earth is Peter talking about? What is this temple that we, our living stones like Christ, are supposed to be built around that cornerstone that is Christ? He's talking about the church. The church where Christ is the head and we are the body. The hands and feet. The church. Not this building. Not this wall. Don't get me wrong. And we are blessed with a beautiful sanctuary. A beautiful church. But church has different meanings. And we as Christians have to understand that, you know, if something should happen to this place, guess what? Lorena Methodist Church is going to meet in that field over there. Because these walls don't define who we are. We are blessed to have them. But we are the church. And we must act and think like the church. Peter says, he has made you priests. Where's a lot of weight with that, isn't it? He has made you priests unto God. I'm sure most of you on a Sunday, if I wanted a Sunday off and I called and said, hey, you remember that, you know, a couple weeks ago on the fifth Sunday Easter when I said God called, or Peter said he called, God calls the son to priest unto him? Yeah. Well, how will you feel about preaching this Sunday? How many of you going to jump up behind this pulpit? Not many. And understandably so. So when he calls us, when Peter says he calls us to be priests unto God, Peter isn't saying that we're all called to a pulpit. But what he is saying is once we are converted, once we become followers, disciples of Jesus Christ, we are all called to ministry. We are all called to the new life we have been gifted, we have been graced with in Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. So, Peter says, to those who believe, belongs the honor that is his. Talking about Christ. Understand that. To those who believe, belongs the honor that is his. What does it say in Romans? We're not just you know, brothers and sisters with Christ. We're heirs with Christ. Heirs. So for those who believe, the honor that is his, but to those who don't believe, it is like a stone on a path to trip over. 
I spent a lot of my life tripping on them stones. And the problem is, is those out in the world, you know, we think about that. We trip over those stones, but sometimes it still doesn't click. There is nothing in the world, well, I'm sure there's a lot worse in the world, but right up there is when you ever stubbed your toe really, really bad. On a sidewalk, on a wall. My, my uh, coffee table, end tables had metal legs. And let me tell you, I've almost thrown them out in the backyard many times. Stubbing a toe hurts. But if I, you know, it would be my own stupidity and ignorance if I walked into my living room every day knowing exactly where the end tables and coffee table are and I stubbed my toe every time I went to the living room. I wouldn't have learned anything, would I? But with this cornerstone, we need to learn. It's there. God placed it there to trip us over and wake us up. To wake up those who are in the dark, who are spiritually asleep. Peter says we are to be living stones built into a spiritual house, built into a temple for God. But again, we run into another issue. We like to be the person sometimes. We want to be the cornerstone. You ever heard the phrase, you know, too many chiefs, not enough Indians? We always want to be chief, whether we admit it or not. That power, that lure of being in charge, having things the way we want it. We want to skip steps. We have to understand that we are not and will not ever be Jesus. When which Peter's talking about building us up into a spiritual house, the problem is, is we hear that and automatically there's something in us that wants to be the architect. When in reality, we are the building material that the architect chooses to you. We will never be the architect. And I know that, you know, sometimes that can weigh on us. Like, man, I, I want to be in charge. I want to be this. I want to be that. But in the matters of faith, in the matters of God, I don't want to be God. I am thankful that he is God and I am I am thankful and blessed that the Lord chooses us. That the Lord, we are the prized creation of the Lord. But again, we like to get jealous. We like power. We like authority. When in reality, there shouldn't be any jealousy. There shouldn't be any hurt. There should be rejoicing and joy that comes from knowing that the Lord, out of all creation, chooses us to use for his glory. Come before the Lord as a living stone and praise God that he chooses us. What an honor it is to know that the Alpha and Omega Chooses Mark, chooses Kyle, chooses Mary, chooses little of us to do big and mighty things. We should rejoice and be filled with joy, brothers and sisters, because once we were all lost, but now we're found. Once we were all blind, but through the grace of God now we see we should be rejoice and be filled with joy always because we are God's people, people of the graceful and merciful God. And then Peter closes in this. He says, God chooses you. God chooses us in order that we might proclaim the mighty acts of him who called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Again. We're all called to ministry. 
We're all called to spread the news because there are those who are so lost in the dark like many of us once were, they can't find their way out. They don't know that there is a key that they can call out to that will open the door. And that key is that cornerstone, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Smile. Be filled with joy that God chooses us to take part in the big thing that God is doing. Little old us. And he chooses us to be, take part in the Missio Dei, his mission to the world, which is a mission of reconciliation of all creation. Rejoice and be filled with joy and praise God that we are no longer, no longer in the dark. But now we are God's children children of the light. It's the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, speaking of ways that we like to be in charge, as we prepare to enter Holy Communion, I invite you all to come with a, re a repentant spirit. And I ask that you choose, as I go through this liturgy, that you reflect and be honest with yourself, as I'm going to be honest with myself, in what ways in our lives are we trying to be the cornerstone? In what ways in our lives do we act as God instead of being and trusting God? Not being God, but just being and trusting God. Because through the sacrament of communion, we have a chance to repent and be washed white and be made new. So we can get on with the work that the Lord calls us to. Brothers and sisters, on the night before meeting with death, Jesus and the disciples were in the upper room. Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, take, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us. Would you please pray with me? God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts that make, make this bread and juice be for us the body and blood of Christ so we may know the presence of the living Christ in this life, in this world, and we may be the body of Christ for the world redeemed by Christ's blood. Holy Father, make us one with Christ one with each other, and one uh, in union with all of creation until Christ comes back in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet forever. It is through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. I'd like to invite Jenna and Marley up. They will be serving communion today. God is doing a great work in our children and youth programs and raising up leaders. Brothers and sisters, as always, I know we're in a Methodist church, but in no way is this a Methodist table. This is God's table, belonging only to the one who built it. But here's the beauty. All God's children are welcome at God's table. The feast has been prepared. The table has been set. Won't you please come forward?
Amen, amen. amen. Brothers and sisters, as we enter our hymn of invitation, if you would like to speak with me, if you'd like me to pray with you, I invite you to come up. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Spirit has moved in you to do this great life-changing thing, then come up. Let's do that today. Maybe you want to join our church family officially. Or maybe, you know, uh, any of those things. I want you to come up. If you would like to come back to the altar and pray on your own, know that the altar is open. And if you want to remember your baptism and rededicate your life to Christ by, by renewing your vows, that powerful act of rededicating our life, come up and let's set a time to do that. Or maybe you've never been baptized and the Spirit is urging you to do so. As I tell everyone, come up, let's set a time to do that. The water is fine. All right? So brothers and sisters, in saying that, would you please stand as able, a united as sons and daughters of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, as we sing to the glory of our King.
brothers and sisters I know in these things, like on Sundays, you know, I stand by the door, I shake hands, I get told thank you so much all the time. At least most of the time, every once in a while somebody tries to hit me. But no, but I want you to make sure that uh, I am just a very, very small piece of the wonderful team God has put together for all of this. So I say that. Make sure today, if you have been blessed by the lyrics on the screen, the sound, by the amazing music, make sure after the service, thank the tech team. Thank the amazing mu our amazing music team because we are blessed beyond measure. So just have one question, and I think you know the answer to it. So I'm going to ask it, and that's going to close us out. Are you a child of God? Yes, I, am. I am. Are you a child of God? Yes, I am. Amen. Be blessed. Receive this benediction. Go from this place knowing that God is yours and you are his. Go from here as a living stone saying, here I am, Lord. Use me for your glory. And may God keep you and bless you and his face shine down upon you all your days. You may go in peace. Amen. Yeah.